submit your ambition. Submit everything that you have planned your life to be before that day. Or what your life has constituted into being. Praise the Lord. Number three. There must be a clear cut willingness to know what he will have you do. What will it cost me? Paul says, who art thou, Lord? Is that not? And what did the Lord answer? I am Jesus Christ whom thou persecutest. And it is hard to kick against the pricks. And what was the next question? What will you have me do? If he is Lord, you don't choose what to do. He chooses what you should do. Somebody say here. Yeah. I know young men today who will lay hand on the sick and headache will go. And the next thing is that they have printed complimentary card. Apostle, most prophet, doctor. You see a vision yesterday night. Nobody will hear a word again. Facebook will block. You are a gifted man, but you don't know him as Lord. And the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. That's the danger. Hallelujah. If I had had time, I would have dealt with that, but I, I can't do that. Because you can be a gifted man and God will be using you. And the reason why he's using you is not because of you. He's using you because of his people that have need and because he loves them. Are you listening to me? So a man who just came out of fornication can raise a cripple. Can still prophesy accurately because the gift and the calling of God has no repentance. But Jesus Himself said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, He said, In that day, some of you will come to me and say, Lord, what did He say? He said, They will say to me, What? Lord. That is what I want you to see. I did what? I prophesied in your name, I did miracles in your name, and Jesus will say to them, Away from me, apart from me, you workers of iniquity. Iniquity is not just sinning. Iniquity is using your will against the will of God. I wish you heard what I just said. It's not just trespass. It's not just sinning. It's using your will against what? The will of God. You know that this is what God wants. But you will do what you want. So when you come under prayer as a prophet to prophesy and see vision. And God is not permitting you to talk. You want to talk because you feel like pleasing the people than pleasing God. I don't know why I'm doubling like this. Let me... Do you understand what I just said? You are more people conscious than God conscious. So God said, get away from me. You use the gift I gave you to do what you want to do. But it didn't come from me because I know you. The word know there is koinonia. I did, that, that, you see... You see, in Eden, the Bible says in the cool of the evening, God will come to do what? Fellowship with Adam. So it was from that fellowship that Adam had with the Lord that he could name every animal. And everything he named them was their name. Are you seeing it now? It's not as if Adam just got up one day and said, hey, what do we call this one now? Okay, you, your name is monkey. You, your name is good. Do you get it? No, that is not what happened. The issue was that any time God fellowships with you, he impregnates you. I hope you know God has palm. But his palm is not liquid. It's not physical. It's spiritual. And it's the word of the Lord. It's Rema. The proceeding word of the Lord. He said we are born again not of a corruptible seed. That word seed there is palma in Greek. Which means sperm in biology. So when God wants to impregnate you, what does he do? He releases his word into your spirit. So when you have fellowship with the Lord, he impregnates you. And then you speak his mind. Now when God impregnates you with his word. And you cannot speak his word or do his mind. And you do your own thing because he has given you gifts to do it. That is iniquity. Do you understand that now? But not Paul. Because he has come to know him as who? Lord. He said, what will you have me to do? May somebody after this conference 
take it as a burden upon himself not to do everything. But do that specific thing he called you to do. I wish you heard my prayer. Even Jesus couldn't do everything. You didn't notice that the man at the beautiful gate lived in the day that Jesus did ministry? Kai. That man at the beautiful gate. Was he alive in the day of Jesus? Did Jesus pass that place? Did he heal the man? Jesus came to a pool called Bethesda in John chapter 5. The Bible said the pool was filled with many invalids. But it was only one man that Jesus healed that day. If you read further in John chapter 5, you now discover that Jesus said, I do not do things as I want to do them. I only do as I see my father do and I speak as I hear him say. That's what it means to host the Lord. The Lord of hosts. He said, Lord, hallelujah. And if you are going to host the Lord of hosts, he must first be Lord. He's not the king of hosts. He's not the savior of hosts. He's what? The Lord of hosts. And if you are looking at hosting the Lord of hosts, we must first know him as Lord. And you cannot know him as Lord without answering the question, what will you have me do? You can't do things because you have ability. You do things because it is his will. Somebody say, I hear. Yeah. Lastly tonight. You must know what exactly the Lord wants you to suffer for his namesake. I wish you heard that one. Did you hear what I just said? You must know what what the Lord wants you to suffer for his namesake, even if it may cost you your life. Many of us became Christian, we don't know the implication of what we, we pledge allegiance to. But a Muslim who became a Muslim terrorist knows what he pledged allegiance to. I don't know that I'm talking to somebody here. The occult man who became an Arye, you know what he pledged allegiance to. The man who joined Oboni, you know what he pledged allegiance to. But the Christian who became born again does not know what he has pledged his allegiance to. So you serve God when it's convenient. You serve God when you are comfortable. You serve God when you want to. But when it is not pleasant, you, you give excuses. He can never be Lord until you know what you must suffer for his namesake. Is somebody here? Hallelujah. That's what it means to come under his authority. When he says, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me, go into the world and do what? And make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them what? In the name. Bringing them under the authority of my name. That's what it means. Teaching them to observe how many things? All things that I've commanded you. And then lo, I will be with you. But today we will pick, we cherry pick what we want. If it's not convenient to say no, this no, 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 it's not modern. And the devil has given us a modern cross. See that old rugged one is dirty, it's outdated, it's not Y2K compliant. Are we still here? Let's read verse 15 and 16 as I close. Can, can we read from, from verse 13, just for clarity's sake? Are we there? He said, then Ananias answered, Lord. What did Ananias answer? I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. The Lord was not aware Come on. He was not aware. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Verse number 15. Can we read together? One, two, three, go. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. 
For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the kings, before the Gentiles, sorry, and the kings and the children of Israel. Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he may suffer for my name's sake. Right? Eh? The things he might suffer. The things if he decides to suffer. The things he must. Who was speaking here? This is what we have edited from the modern gospel. If your Christianity costs you nothing, it's not the gospel. Are you listening to me? If you love father, love mother, love anything, anything you love above the master, he's not Lord. And anything that you love so much that can take you to hell, the Bible says, do what? Pluck it out. Paul was willing to suffer. How many of you know that when Paul stood before uh, King Fidelis and Agrippa, and they listened to his case, the man said, I would have set him free. And Paul lifted up his hand and said, I didn't come here to be set free. I wish you understand. The reason for, I, I appeal to Caesar. I may go to Rome bound. I may go in pains. I may go in chains. I may go under shipwreck. However, there must be some people in the house of Caesar that must hear the gospel from my mouth. Saul was brought before the proconsul in Acts 16. You remember the story? And then they were ordered to be beaten and to be put in prison. Right? How many of you know that Paul was a Roman citizen? And by that singular status, nobody was permitted to flog him. Is that true? He carried his citizen, his, his uh, passport of Roman uh, uh, extinction and put it somewhere and put his back to be beaten. You know why? There are some prisoners in prison that must be saved. There is a jailer and his household, entire household, that must be saved. He denied himself. The right and the privilege, which is not a sin to declare I'm a Roman citizen. But if he had done that, he would not have the privilege to go to prison. Did you notice that when the prison doors opened, the Bible says suddenly, right? There was an earthquake, the chains broke, the doors opened, and all that stuff. And when the jailer came, he pulled out the sword, he wanted to kill himself, and Paul said, we are intact. My question is that, it was not Paul and Silas alone that were in that cell. What did the people hear that they didn't escape? Paul was able to exert such an influence upon the prisoners to the point that they had opportunity to escape and they refused to escape. One day prophet came from, from, from Jerusalem to, 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 to Antioch and, and, and while he was in the spirit, he, he, he saw a belt on the ground and he said, who owns this giddo? And he carried it and began to tie his hands. He said, so shall it be done to the owner of this belt. Somebody would have given testimony in church and said, praise that God. The blood of God has delivered me from the coming and pending affliction. The Lord has revealed so that they can redeem. Not Paul. You know why? The Lord has said he is a chosen vessel unto me. And I will show him how much great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Saul knew that he needed to go to Jerusalem. And he knew what was waiting for him in Jerusalem. He said, but I go bound, not knowing what shall happen to me or what shall befall me. But this one thing I know is the will of God for me to go to Jerusalem. And whether it's going to be death, whether it's going to be life, whether it's going to be pleasant, I go. Can God still ask you to go to Afghanistan? Can God still call you to Pakistan? Can God send you as a missionary to Saudi Arabia? If God asks you to go to Sabisa Forest now, you will say, 
I bind you, Satan. I do most of my mission work in the, in the up north. When Boko Haram came to Mubi to invade that land, they came with a list of ministers. I don't live in Mubi, but my name was on that list. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are not willing to suffer for his name's sake, he cannot be your Lord. Because when he becomes your Lord, you are no longer living for yourself. You are living for him. As I close tonight, I want to show you something that you may not have seen. Before the city of Damascus, the Bible says, a light from where? From heaven encountered Saul and then he began to hear a voice from where? From heaven, right? And the voice told him to go into the city and go to the street called straight to the house of one certain Judas. And there, he'll be told what to do, right? He went to the house of one certain Judas and Judas was not the one instructed to speak to him. The Bible said there was a certain disciple not apostle. There was a certain disciple, not prophet. Somebody says certain disciple. I hope you know that we are all disciples. Irrespective of the titles we give ourselves, we are first supposed to be what? Disciples. There was a certain disciple where? In the city of Damascus. I believe that such men are the ones who were responsible for the invisible wall that guided Damascus. Because they have heard of what they were doing to them in Jerusalem, right? So they began to raise an invisible wall. And when Saul was coming, the invisible wall blocked him. But that's not my emphasis for tonight. My emphasis is this. How come that God could find a man that he could still send and the man was willing to go? Even if it meant his death. Are you getting the point? He said, I've heard of this man. The Lord said, go thy way. And say, yes, sir. He said, but I've heard. He said, I have heard the same thing and I know. But now it's what? A chosen vessel. Go. Go to meet him. Could it be that Malam Ibrahim Shekau has not receive an encounter from Jesus because he could not find a certain disciple that will hear on the same frequency with him. He didn't hear that. I don't know that you're understanding me now. The Lord couldn't encounter Saul in Jerusalem. He couldn't encounter him. It had to be Damascus because of what? There is what? A certain disciple that operate on the same frequency from where the voice that spoke to Saul came from. And a man qualified to disciple Saul. An apostle to the nations was discipled by what? A certain disciple. Can you be that certain disciple in Unnewi when you live here? Can heaven come to that point where he can trust you in Umbudi as that one that he can say, I have encountered one soul. Go and meet him there. The Lodi of the pirates has just been encountered by the Lord. Go there. Can you cry where you are seated today? I have paid my debt. But there is a debt that you are going to pay. And the Lord is asking you today. Are you willing for him to be Lord? Can you ask yourself where you are seated right now? Is Jesus Lord over my life? Genuine. Ask, be sincere with yourself. You can tell lies and tell anybody lie, but if you lie to yourself and successfully believe that lie, then you are the most deceived. Are you here tonight? So ask where you are seated now. Is he Lord over my finance? Or I can spend my money as I feel like? 
Is the Lord the owner of your money or you are the owner of the money? The life you give to Jesus on the altar, who is the owner when you live here? The mouth, the eyes, the ears, you, every part of your body, who owns them? The clothes you wear, who owns them? The property you own, who owns them? The mind you have, who owns them? That's what the Bible says that you must remember the Lord your God for his is he that give it the power to get wealth. Because he's your owner. That's why you give tight. Tight is an acknowledgement of ownership. You are paying back the owner to establish that the owner, the source. He gave you good health because he's the owner. He gave you opportunity because he's the owner. He gave you favor because he's the owner. He gave you resources because he's the owner. Your mind, is it renewed? Have you handed over to the Lord? Talk to the Lord where you are seated tonight. Talk to the Lord quickly. 